Welcome to Uncle's Channel. Thanks for watching today. And there are two things I truly do adore in this life, and that would be Mario Kart and Bloodborne. And there's a lot of things in between, but I truly do enjoy both of these things to a very high degree. And uh, occasionally, things that are very much on the opposite side of the spectrum do come together. It is the case today for a game called Nightmare Kart on Steam or on PC, but it's not really called Nightmare Kart. The game is called Bloodborne Kart because it's basically a Mario Kart version of Bloodborne. Uh, the creator Lilith uh, Walther, if I'm saying her name correctly, um, she actually created this game as Bloodborne Kart, and then at the very last second, Sony stepped in and said, nope, can't do that. It made her change like a few assets here and there to make it a different game, but I'm telling you, if you play the game, you know every single reference in the game of where it came from in Bloodborne, whether it's characters or tracks or items, you know exactly where everything sort of held from in the game. And so as you're playing through it, it's pretty much Bloodborne card, but I'm here to tell you the game is absolutely fantastic. She did an amazing job crafting this game from the ground up, and she does have a small team working with her, especially for like the music and such. She also did the Bloodborne PlayStation 1 D-Mate that came out on Steam last year, and I think it only went through like not the entire game, but maybe like through Father Gas Coin, somewhere around that area, but um, a great, you know, D-Make of Bloodborne as of what it looked like on the PlayStation. So if you enjoy Bloodborne card, there is more Bloodborne content from uh, Lilith that you can also check out. But let's go ahead and jump into the actual review here. Now the game does take around an hour and a half to two hours to finish it. I did play the game from start to finish. And when you do finish, you get a new game plus. You can play the game through again with a little bit harder settings. Or you can jump into the multiplayer mode or sort of free play. And so there's a ton of content unlockables inside the game itself. It's a very rich game for a um, one person created project here. Now there are 15 tracks inside the game and they're not all just simply race tracks like in Mario Kart. Some of them are gonna be battle tracks and we're gonna be like a uh, boss battles and we're going to be like captured inside. I'd almost compare it more like to Diddy Kong Racing where there's like a uh, actual story to go along with the game and uh, more variety outside just simply racing throughout. And so we're going to get to the actual individual levels in a second as well as some of the boss battles in a second as well. But um, just know there's a lot of variety inside the game and it never gets stale. And as you're playing through it, it really does feel like you're playing through the actual story of Bloodborne with just some uh, name swaps here and there. Now, the gameplay of the game is pretty easy to pick up and play. I wasn't able to use my actual controller because I used a PS4 controller for the PC. So I'd use the keyboard, but even playing like keyboard here, it was actually pretty easy just simply to jump in and have uh, pretty much no learning curve to play the game. Now, as you're racing through here, they're going to be uh, just like in Mario Kart, like little items that you can pick up, you know, like the items inside Bloodborne that you would pick up. And uh, it does give you, you know, different things from Bloodborne, like your pistol that you can shoot out, which would be like a red turtle shell in Mario Kart or like uh, blood stains that you can lay behind you. You can also get like several of the weapons, like, you know, for for example, like the Great Axe or the uh, Threaded Cane. And so I think they call it Threaded Sword inside the game. But every weapon inside of Bloodborne, or the majority of them, are going to be accessible as far as like items that you can equip on your character and then acquire if we run through an item box here. There's also going to be a boost meter that's not an individual item, but a separate button. And you have to collect ether in order to uh, use your boost. In order to increase that meter, you have to do like power slides, which obviously give you a boost as well, doing like tricks off of rams, or just simply killing some of the enemies that you would see throughout the levels, like werewolves or crows or skeletons. So there's plenty of opportunity to increase your ether to you can continue to get boost, and it's also going to increase your overall maximum speed for your character. And I think there are 15 carts that you can choose from. I did go with more of a uh, just a basic cart for the majority of the game, but you can also get like the motorcycles, you can get um, Lady Maria's like astral clock tower, or, like part of a clock watch here, or the gears of that. Um, you can also ride on top of the back of a pig, just like there are pigs or boars inside the game. And so a, a large variety for carts as well. But pretty much if you've played any Mario Kart type game, the controls are gonna feel very natural here. And um, it's going to be a very much of a pick up and play. But let's get more into the nitty gritty here of what makes this game actually Bloodborne Kart instead of simply a Mario Kart uh, clone out there. Now, like I said, everything's going to hell from the game Bloodborne, which is simply uh, small tweaks here and there. And when I mean like small tweaks, like you're going to know where they pulled it from. Like uh, German is renamed Herman inside this game. He's still in a wheelchair. So I like a little... Uh, doll assistant's going to help him. You don't have Father Gas Coin. You have Father Gregory, who's going to have the exact same blindfold as him. Has a second beast phase that you have to fight against him as well. Instead of having Mikolash, you're going to have Nicholas, who's going to have exactly the same character. Has like a little cage over his head. They tried to modify it just a little bit by giving him like a little, I guess, like bird or chick on top of his head. A, a good little bit of sense of humor. He's actually the most entertaining and uh, humorous character inside the entire game. But uh, they really do um, wear their influence on the sleeve here. And it was very obvious that this game just simply was created as a Bloodborne card and changed over last second to uh, basically avoid the copyright confusion. 
But if you've ever played Bloodborne, you know where every single reference is going to come from. And um, that goes for the levels as well. Like as you're playing through here, you, pl you basically race through Central Yarnum. And when you do that, like even the Cleric Beast like jumps off from basically the tower in the background, lands on the track or a little bridge here, just like inside the game. You race through the sewers here of Central Yarnum. You also go through the forest of all the snakes inside the game. You fight against the, uh, or like a miniature boss battle against the shadows of Yarnum here as well. And the uh, even like the Mikolash level, like you go through that, it's gonna be exactly the same layout as it was inside of Bloodborne, all the way down to the same mechanics as far as like trying to get him to go into certain areas inside the little maze here, sort of uh, basically cage it off in order to have a small boss fight before it opens back up and he runs away again. Like everything in this game is completely Bloodborne. The characters, the levels, the level design, like the overall aesthetics, they just simply had to change it due to copyright reasons. But I'm telling you, like they really did a fantastic job of giving you an idea of how Bloodborne would play if it was a Mario Kart or Diddy Kong racing style game. Now, as far as like the individual game modes, the racing is very straightforward. The boss battles is probably like the most unique approach here because you're actually more like an open arena trying to attack or um, basically uh, take out the individual boss. Like the Father Gas Coin battle, you're going through here, or I'm sorry, Father Gregory battle. It's very much of a um, open field and you're sort of going around it trying to attack him. Same thing, like I mentioned for Mikolash here. Um, when you go against like the um, Shadows of Yarnum, that's gonna be more like a open boss battle as far as like multiple of them and multiple on your team and it's just very much of a kind of a normal uh, battle mode on mario kart i'm telling you like the game is really creative on finding ways to bring bloodborne to life in a kart aesthetic and uh, i just really do enjoy the game but that's not to say the game is not without some flaws anyway because like when i was fighting mikolash the game actually um, sort of soft locked me a couple different times while fighting him as far as like getting to a room the cage coming down he wasn't in the room and i had to simply restart the battle it happened again on the second time i went through it and um, it actually just sort of froze the game up and he just sort of died. Sort of like it happens in like actual From Software games. If the boss gets sort of locked out or a glitch happens, they sort of kill him off. And so I, mean, I guess it's true to From Software fashion. And I actually won the uh, Mikolash battle that way. But even when you're going for like the normal races, sometimes like the AI doesn't feel like quite on target um, for a normal kart racer. And I'm sure some of that's corrected in New Game Plus, New Game Plus Plus, as far as like being really, really difficult. But sometimes they like just fall in the traps and sort of like glitched out and like, you know, do like small loops inside of an area. And um, man, you just lap them so many times because they just can't proceed on. But like I said, those flaws are very few and far between. And uh, a lot of that will be fixed on New Game Plus because the difficulty is going to be uh, upped from there. But uh, let's talk about another great aspect of the game, and that is going to be the soundtrack. The entire soundtrack is done by a person known as the Noble Demon, and I'm telling you, they made some top-tier killer songs for this game. And they're not all going to be like Bloodborne copy songs. Some of them have like a little bit of a haunting atmosphere to them, but the best songs on the soundtrack are going to be like super poppy, uh, super carty type songs. Some of these you would feel very much akin to on a Mario Kart type game, and it almost doesn't fit the tone of Bloodborne, but like goes into like the sense of humor here, sort of the lightheartedness. So you know like you're playing a Bloodborne game, but like it's not to be taken too seriously. And um, I don't know, it like really just encapsulates like the overall feeling of the game. The best song is on the track Pocket Dream Course, which is a uh, ripoff of the Hunter's Dream from Bloodborne. And the song itself reminds me a great deal of the Moon theme from DuckTales on the NES. And that's like a really high compliment because I adore that song in like every way. And so like, this song has like a little bit of a, a remembrance of that, but um, it's carried on in its own direction completely. And it's just a fantastic song. Even if you don't download this game, at least download the soundtrack or look into the soundtrack on YouTube. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed with some uh, top tier tracks. But overall, if you enjoy Bloodborne, just simply want to explore in another way, Bloodborne Kart or Nightmare Kart is definitely going to be a game that's down your alley 100%. If you enjoy Mario Kart and you just enjoy a good kart racer, this game is going to be down your alley 100%. But if you enjoy both of those, this game here is a dream come true or a nightmare come true, I guess, uh, better uh, poetic there. Uh, for it but um overall like it's a great game go download it you won't be disappointed and if you enjoyed the game enough go back and play the bloodborne d make or the ps1 d make that she has on the website as well but if you enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel check my other videos listed up above and go out there find a great game to play simply have a great rest of the day